Good afternoon, this is Jeff Copperthay with eSIMS Engineering, and today we're going to go over assignment 314, the pie charts and bar graphs assignment from the computer science principles curriculum. Uh, oddly enough, uh, in case you didn't catch it in the first place, but uh, PLTW definitely made this activity 3.1.4 on purpose, you know, with the number pi and everything uh, being 3.14 and so on. So, makes sense. All right, so in this assignment, uh, they don't have a source file for you, so one of the things that can be confusing for some students is mm -hmm. when you get to the question here on A and B, uh, and then on 3, creating a pie, ch a pie chart in Python, uh, you very well might be confused as to where that information is. So, uh, the reason or where that information actually is, is within this presentation that's at the top of the, um, top of the procedure. They do intend for you to review this particular presentation because it does go over some very important things. And I'll be going over some of these things as we go forth with this video. Um, it does kind of go over how to do sectors, how to, uh, how what the Python code for generating a pie chart looks like using the matplotlib function, uh, library, excuse me. And then also some of the information about escape characters and sequences and formatting and whatnot. So I'm going to actually leave it on that formatting window uh, for you. But in case you're wondering where that code is, uh, that's where it is. The only thing that also is kind of confusing here is, yeah, it got it in this presentation, but you can't copy it, like, you know, as text, so you have to kind of copy it yourself. So what I did for my students uh, is I just uh, made the Python file myself and then distributed it on Google Classroom, or you can use another LMS if you're using another LMS to do the same thing. But anyway, let's go back, let's go into the assignment. Now, information that you can uh, get from uh, pie charts. Now pie charts are useful when you have something that's out of a total that you need to split up and determine so how much of a certain category is within a total. So pie charts are very useful for those kinds of uh, applications. Here's an example of 2012 mean household expenditures of $52,440 a year. Uh, and it says you're suggesting improvements for the visualization. Um, some of them could be combinations of, uh, could be, for example, combinations of some of the categories. Um, also, you may want to order them by uh, by amount. So it's kind of, you know, the way these are, 4% here, 5% here, 3% over here. These are kind of split up, so it makes it a little diff more difficult to read. A yeah, good pie chart may have all of the categories that are, you know, the most popular categories would be next to each other. And then in, you know, clockwise or counterclockwise, they'd be in descending order. Um, so those are those are possibilities for that. For this one here, uh, this is one that's, that's a little bit closer to that, where you have your smaller categories uh, nearby. You do have one that's kind of pulled out, but if this one is pulled out, why why is this one not pulled out, right? So th that's called an explosion, by the way, when you have a selector that's kind of uh, put out of the pie chart. Usually it's done for emphasis or if that value is very, very small. Um, energy losses in a vehicle in city driving can also be, you know, kind of a not really clear title as well as possibility. So anyway, uh, what you're really here for, of course, is this number three here. For number three, it's saying to create a pie chart in Python, you're going to place category labels in one list and quantities in another list. You would call the pie method on the subplot axis as, as shown below. The pie method is documented here. So now you can go onto this website, and this website will load up uh, if you look for pie. Uh, and here you can hold control F. It's, it's loading the page. It's a big page. Um, even on a regular broadband. So I'll let that load for a second. Let's just kind of go over what we're going to be doing in this, this uh, section here. You're going to be using information from a website. In this case, it's the business uh, Department of Business in uh, government website. And if it loads, and I think it's getting hung up right now in the fact that it's trying to download this library. So I'm going to, uh, you have to take my word for it. Pi is uh, in here. <laughs> and you're going to, if you want to look up all the things that you can do to a pie chart, you can check that out. So now let's go ahead and go to one of this uh, website. I'm going to actually refresh this page as well as my uh, computer has decided to. And we're back. We had a little computer snafu, so uh, I had to restart the browser, and we should be back in business now. Okay, so uh, as I was mentioning, you're going to see there are a couple of websites for this uh, particular assignment, and we'll open both of them up. They both take you to a uh, employed and unemployed persons by occupation in, uh, table, and reading this table can be a little tricky. Uh, we'll tell you right away that this particular table here with average hourly uh, and weekly earnings of all employees on private non-farm payrolls by interest protector seasonally adjusted, this is not a pie chart. Chartable data, data set because it's not out of a total. So you see that these particular ones are obviously attributes and they're statistics and they, they are graphable in certain ways, but they can't be pie chartable because if they were, they would be out of a total. So if we had, for example, a um, if we had, for example, a total 
budget salary out of like a you know if we had like the that they're paying the companies paying 50 million dollars nah, that'd be a lot of money but you know a couple million dollars uh, a year to its employees and then you had a breakdown of how much each employee earns and you can make a pie chart of what percentage of them are actually earning uh, you know what percentage of the budget are they earning that's a possibility but on this, but just so you're watching this video if you're trying to make a pie chart of this video I'm sorry this video <laughs> this data set you're wasting your time the table you do want is the one here, table A13. That's the one uh, where you can get some information that you can pie chart. The way this table is formatted, and this is kind of confusing for some of you, so I understand. Uh, the way this is formatted is that the total is at the top row. So this is all employees 16 and over from March 2017 to March 2018 that are employed, unemployed, and unemployment rates, and they're by occupation, not seasonally adjusted. So uh, this is um, in particular areas. I'm trying to say economic news release, labor statistics, household data, um, by occupation. This is in the thousands as well, by the way. So we think here, uh, March 2017, that's 152 million people right there, and 154 million people. So that's just an understanding of what, this, what these numbers are. Now, now that, that you got under, that understood, this is the total, right? So now what you have here, these are all subcategories. So one of the things that you could do, and this is what we'll do in the videos, we could make a pie chart of all of the subcategories and say what, per, basically we can get a, a percentage idea of what percentage of the people that are employed in the United States are management professional and, and uh, you know, management professional and related occupations, how many of them are service occupations, sales and office, et cetera, et cetera. We can make a pie chart out of that. And then, um, we, because it's out of a total. This one here, the unemployment rates, that's not something you can pie chart because again, this is an average. So you can't, it's not like this is a, a sum of all people that are unemployed, that's not the way it works. These are sums of people that are unemployed, these are some people that are employed. So you can make pie charts out of any four of these columns right here at the top. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make one for March 2018 since we're recording this in, at the end of April 2018. So let's, uh, let's go to the program. The, I've got the program kind of written. This is the one that's basically right off of the PowerPoint. Uh, and I'm going to sort of change the editing so we can kind of see the statistics as well as the titles. And that should work just fine. And what we have here, this let's just kind of walk through what this pie chart uh, method does or this program does. So we have uh, three lists. We have quantities, we have labels, and we have colors. Um, we have here, this in this case, this is quantities. This is sort of that default chart we saw in one of the assignments. If I run this program right now, it will create an image file, and we can get here this particular output. And this actually is exactly the same chart. And if I, of course, want this to be in the order or changing of formatting and things, I'd have to do that some of that myself. Um, we're not going to spend time on that now, but I do want to point a few things out about this program. We have a list for the quantities. We have a list for the labels. And also within this list, you'll notice here that we have this sort of, uh, I'll highlight it here in the text editor. We have this what's called an escape character. The slash N means new line, so or line break, if you will. So you'll notice that when I had this chart run, I'll show it again to you. Excuse me. There was a, uh, here it is, contributions to children outside the home. Without this line break in here, this would actually run up excuse me, off the screen. Uh, and we have another instance of that over here, clothing and services, there's a line break as well. And I believe there's even a line break in the title. So if I look down at the title, sure enough, there it is, slash N. And there's other things that you can use line breaks, uh, or sorry, escape characters for. And uh, this is one of the instances where you're using that and there's a table of reference uh, in the PowerPoint if you wanna see other uses of escape characters. So uh, the way we do that is we make a subplot, we make just a one by one subplot. Uh, we do the pi method on this object, which we use the quantities, we use the labels, and we set them equal to labels because that's what the function needs. And we set that's equal to colors as well. And then we have so the auto PTC uh, command here on this pi method is basically is we're telling it how we want the percent to look like. In this case, uh, we have uh, percent point zero f percent percent um, we want and again we're using in this case the percent as a percent uh, as an escape character you'll notice here when it shows all of the percentages these percentages are all whole numbers right so what this is saying is we don't want any decimal places and we and we don't want any uh, anything after this to sort of uh, fix value right so we want it to be no decimal places and our percent if I were to change this to one and then make my pie chart 
I would see now that I have a pie chart with, which has a uh, percent uh, with the tenths place. And again, the percent percent here to indicate that we are using uh, this. And I just want to kind of show you also if I kind of do this, if I just make this like this, and then run that pie chart, you'll see I get an incomplete format. So I don't want to do that. We want to have the percent and the percent on top of that. So basically, we're saying after that. And then if we kind of try a few other things with that, we could say, we can say percent equals, we can say p equals percent dot uh, 1f is a percent one decimal place and then float after. Um, in this case, there's two of them. Uh, we want to make sure that there is um, seven places printed. That's what this means here, right here. Uh, if there's 0.2f, we basically would say we're not gonna we're not gonna round in this case. Um, and that's here, right there. And if I do 1f and we do that, and we get the percent symbol after. So if I just have not, if I don't want the percent to print, I actually would have to take both of these out. And if I want to print with zero, and if I want to print with a certain amount of places, like if I always want to make sure that there are two places printed, uh, it's kind of hard to pick up on here, but you'll see the way this now is formatted. We have sort of no percent symbol, and then if I wanted to kind of indicate, if, if I try to do like five, for example, just to kind of make a point here, and then notice the difference here. Um, where's my other one I wanted to show? You'll notice the difference here. You see how the uh, easy to see was with the four. The four here kind of shifted off to the right. They're basically saying to make sure we print five numbers, five places first before we play all that. So we'll just uh, leave that be for now, and we'll put that back to where it was. So we'll leave it at that. Um, we set the title here, and then we just show the figure, and that's sort of the, the crux of the program. So I'll give you a little bit more information than we probably needed to see for this problem, but let's go ahead and make a pie chart out of this data now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch the quantities, and we're going to, we're just going to do, we're not going to do uh, the subcategories because there's actually subcategories within the subcategories. You notice that, for example, management professional, there's also a subcategory within that for business and professionals. So we're only going to use the lines that are heading lines. So we're going to use one, two, three, four, five different quantities. So let's put those quantities in here. 63067, oops, let me make sure they're in the brackets, of course. 63067, comma. Uh, here we got service occupations. That's two lines down. That's 2656. Four, comma, sales and office occupations is three two eight nine six. No commas needed. Three two eight nine six, comma, uh, commas are of course separating the values in this case. Thirteen eight six zero is the next one. That's natural resources construction, and then the last one is production and transportation. Eighteen four nine zero. And again, these numbers are all in the thousands. So this really means in this case that there's sixty three million people that are management professional and related occupations. Now, when I go to the labels. Generally speaking, I'm going to want things that are multiple characters, anywhere from maybe 20, 15 to 20 characters, to have a line break after it. So I'm going to insert those as escape characters when I get to that. So uh, in the labels list, we'll start with quotes, and we're going to go management, professional, and then line break, slash n, and related occupations. And I'm going to leave that actually as related. And notice how I'm putting these in quotes as well. Service occupations, sales, oops, sales and office occupations. I actually probably don't even need the word occupations in here. I probably can just do occupation and do that within my title. So I'm actually gonna do that related and then we're gonna keep service. We'll do sales office, close quotes, uh, natural resources. Um, natural resources, construction and maintenance. Actually, we'll do a new line. Construction and maintenance. Let's just leave it at that. Natural resource, construction, maintenance. And then the last category is production, transportation, and others. And other. I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, so we put those labels in. And then we're going to do colors. We only need five colors this time, so we're actually going to kind of just cut these off. I'm just using the default colors from here. I'm not going to kind of uh, really need to worry too much about that. Uh, we'll keep the quantities, keep the labels, colors, auto percent. We'll keep that percent format. And then we'll just change the title to uh, occupations employed, occupations. And then we'll do a line break, March 2018 in thousands. Actually, we'll do a line break after that, too, or before that as well. So let's check that out, see what that looks like. Okay, so let's see. So, so you see how uh, on this image, the way this is kind of uh, printing out, it's kind of cutting off the top there a little bit. 
and it's also cutting off the uh, right side. So if I expand the window, I can kind of you know fix that. But you know it's it, it is what it is. Um, not going to met too much about that. So here it does give you the percentages automatically. So we have 41 percent of people that are employed or in management, professional, and related for services. Uh, here's the service one. Here's sales and office. Here's natural resources and production, transportation, and others. So this is a good visual of the breakdown of all the people that are employed in the United States and where they currently work. So that uh, that that that's feasible. Now again, if you choose to use a different data set, as long as it's got a total of something, then you can make a pie chart out of it, and you would just do a similar uh, method for that. Now, if we continue on the assignment here, uh, we have bar graphs here. Now, this one here, you're not actually going to be making a bar, gra bar graph, but kind of the same answers that I have given to you before um, about what makes a bar graph, what makes a pie chart, good things like that. So uh, pie charts, of course, are emphasizing the comparison of quantities added to a meaningful 100%, but if they're not being uh, added to a meaningful total, then you would use a bar graph instead. You also can use a stack bar graph to compare total quantity for different categories while also comparing those of totals. Uh, stack bar graphs makes it difficult to compare the components. Uh, you would use a side-by-side bar, side bar graph instead. So here's an example. Uh, this is a information that you cannot represent by a pie chart, the same reason as before. This is gross revenue for a movie, but it's not not out of a total. So if we had like a total of how many, how much money was spent in movies, then we can maybe do a percentage of how much uh, of that of that earnings was Avatar, how much was Titanic, et cetera, et cetera. Um, same deal here. This is kind of uh, difficult to v envision here because um, if we make a stacked bar graph, this is the population of California, but see here's the subdivisions of that. So yeah, you could make a pie chart out of this, but what makes it difficult here is that it's hard for you to compare um, Percentage-wise and also numbers-wise, are there more 18 to 64-year-olds in California? Well, you can tell by the expanse of this that yes, there are. Um, you know, and it's also difficult to see certain age groups uh, because it's just so small. So, you know, making stack bar graphs is sometimes useful, but it does make it difficult to compare individual categories that are spread around different uh, states. In this case, um, you could use three pie charts, seven time series. The advantages of three uh, methods um, in here. Pie charts would be kind of useful. You could put pie charts next to each other for each state, and then you can see percentage breakdowns of each, so the population wouldn't matter. Um, the reason why, another reason why this chart is also kind of kind of difficult is because this remember this is out of total population of California. Of course, there's going to be more in this category just because the population is much much bigger than these other states as well. So a pie chart would be a good what's called per capita um, com comparison. Uh, social media sites that are important to you. What are the advantages of the three methods here? So. Having Facebook here, this is sort of a trend of Facebook users, uh, percent, a percentage of teenagers, which, so, which social media site is most important. So you can kind of see here, this is good to detect trends. Um, you may wish to sort of subdivide this into other categories, like you could say what percentage of, uh, of teens liked Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google in 2012, Google Plus in this case, um, and then have a year comparison as well. You can do that as well. So. Uh, Using Excel to create a visualization, so I'm going to actually stop at the video at this point here because this is pretty, uh, pretty easy to to do. But I will show you how to how to get this data. So if I go to this particular table and I go to a zip code, so I'm going to go to a zip code for um, for the where our school is located, which is West Haven. So that's six zero six five one six, and we want to know. Uh, do I have to add scripts? No, I don't. Um, in this area, if I want to go by 06516, and make sure I'm doing that right, West Haven Town. Okay, so West Haven, so here we go. Um, it says here that we go to that, we enter zip code, city, county, and stats search bar. When you see your desired entry, uh, click on the entry, select more ellipse near the icon at the top right of the page, and select the Excel format to download. So, top right of the page. Age. Let's see. We can select a category that we want. Uh, let's just do population estimates. This is a very, very basic one here. So for population estimates, we get quick facts about it. If I go to the more, this is not three dots anymore, uh, I can get a CSV file, which is what you can open up in Excel, and then notice that it does download this, and you can open this up in Excel. It's the same way that you opened it up in 311, so if you want to see how to work with Excel or how to use it, uh, you can always check that uh, video at 311 um, from an earlier assignment. And it does, you just gives you the directions you want to follow, and you just take care of that and create a chart from that. So that's that. So I hope that this video was helpful for you. I hope that you have a wonderful day, and I'll be back soon with another video on 315, and we'll also do a video on 321 very soon. I hope you have a wonderful day.